Hey everyone, it's Albie. Um, I'm going over my worst books that I've read in 2023. Uh, it's a rainy day. I didn't put on makeup. I didn't do my hair. And these books don't deserve glam. So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start off with, most of these are two stars. I did not have a single one star. Um, a few of these are three star, but I think I was like a generous three. So I'll just sort of go over them. Um, the first one that really annoyed me was Hip by the Cupid Stick by Abigail Owen. It was a <coughs> Cupid Psyche, I believe, uh, romance, just really poorly written, undeveloped characters, not really even that spicy. We read this as a group pick for a group I'm in on um, Instagram. Me and my a couple friends read it. Um, I don't think anyone really loved it, and so I don't think we've done a, a book club since because we're like, ugh. But um, Hip by the Cupid Stick uh, needed more Cupid, needed more stick, I guess. Uh, the next book that I did not enjoy was As If I Wouldn't Fall by Jessica Kane. Uh, Jessica Kane is kind of a hit or miss author for me. I think she's one where I need to look at the tropes and the kink she is supplying in her story because she's pure smut. If you're not into this type of kink she's writing, then you're just not going to enjoy that story. So this one is, uh, it's like a bully romance. They're in high school. He's like, I'm going to fill you up like a, um, like a gas engine with, you know, stuff. And she's like, oh no. And then she's like, I want it. You know, so just kind of silly. I don't know. It just, I feel like an old lady because I'm like, it glamorized teen pregnancy. Well, you know, it kind of did. So, um, just wasn't my vibe. I don't love the whole bully thing. And then the overflowing of, I must get her pregnant with my seed to carry on the name of, uh, Waffle House, whatever his name was. So just wasn't for me. Alrighty. Uh, this one hurt. <laughs> this hurts. Uh, did not enjoy Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. Surprise, surprise. Um, characters were just kind of, eh. They were really annoying. Um, I know a lot of people had qualms with the hero being obsessed with the bust line of the heroine. But honestly, it was mostly when he was like, uh, what's that? What's the way to say it? Pitching a tent or um, massaging with oils sort of thing. So <laughs> I was waiting for like the audience. Um, but... I, that didn't bother me because it's like it's like his fantasy. He's not like actively in the storyline like oogling her boobs. So that doesn't necessarily bother me. I could bother other people. But the one that bothered the most, I won't go there. <laughs> but um, overall, just wasn't loving it. And just it was just kind of lackluster. And I love me some Tessa Bailey. I love her. And cute cover. The heroine actually isn't plus size. She's just um, she's just drawn that way. <laughs> like um, Jessica Rabbit. Um, so she's more like curvy Barbie where she's not really <laughs> curvy or anything. Um, so Secretly Yours, it was a three, but it just wasn't for me. Now the sequel, Unfortunately Yours, I did enjoy. All right. Another, this was one of my lowest rated books. It was two stars. It was her favorite jack-o'-lantern by Rebecca Rennick. Uh, I did, I haven't read Iceberg yet. Um, my friend started chapter one. We were, we were buddy, buddy reading it. She started a little couple hours before I was going to plan to start. And she's like, you want to, you want to wait to read this? Cause I don't like it. I was like, sure, that's fine. <laughs> so, uh, I will read Icebreaker, but I talked a lot about my friends that have read Icebreaker, particularly Brandy. Um, she did not like that book and she gave her reasons why. And her reasons why for not liking that book are the reasons why I didn't like this book. So, um, I told, uh, Justine when we do read Icebreaker, we can hate read it together. I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is stupid. But anyway, um, the hero and heroine, they're like 26, which I'm 32. I'll be 32 in a month. Um, so, you know, 26 isn't a spring chicken. You got to have your own insurance. And they acted really immature and it was so high school-y. I was so annoyed. I do not want to read a high school romance. And these people focused on high school enemies when they're 26. I could care less about those evil people at my high school. Um, I mean, do I, do, did I Facebook search them and see that they got divorced and was like, huh, told you, you know, maybe. But, you know, I don't think about my high school enemies anymore. I hope they think about me and how wonderful my life is. <laughs> just kidding. But um, this book, it just relied on, like, that narrative of, like, oh, I was the weird girl in high school. He was the hot jock. And, oh, I'm quirky now. And uh, he's hung like a horse. What do I do? You know? I was like, give me a break. So really childish uh, dilemmas and dramas and it, beautiful cover. Really cute. I love a good cartoon cover. I think they're really fun. Oh, God. It was just so weird. And, like, the series is called, like, it's like the Gummy Bear Erotica series or something. I don't know. So, there's other books I'm not going to read anymore by that author, unfortunately. Alrighty. So, this one is kind of confusing for me when I went back to look at my notes because I gave The Crack and Sacrifice five stars. I'm going to change it. It's a two-star read. 
is two stars. So crack and sacrifice, we have Catalina and Thane. Why was our hero bisexual with no like storyline to go with it? Like he had a husband, the husband dies and he marries Catalina and there's like, like there's, it, it, I just wanted some storyline about that. You know, we don't always get a bisexual hero. So why wasn't that delved into? So I'm gonna change that. And this one was also low. And this is also by Katie Robert, the Gargoyles Captive. It was a three star, a generous three, more like a two. Um, this one, no plot, barely spice. The spice was just like, uh. um, I've gone on some uh, tangents about Katie Robert. I enjoy her books. I just don't feel like she enjoys writing the series. And so I don't really have high hopes for books four and five, which is really a bummer because, um, the Dragon's Bride was really good and it was really, it really shook up a couple things in the book world, especially with the cover, with the font, with the storyline. And then books two and three just didn't deliver. And I don't know, I don't think, I think even while she said it, she's really putting her, her, her like eff effort and enthusiasm and excitement, which is fine, into her Dark Olympus series. And this series, the deal with the demon series is, I believe, fully independently published. So why doesn't she want to pause it and give it some love? I don't, I don't know. So Gargoyle's captive. Um, the hero, the heroine, she, her family comes from a long line of like vampire, vampire killers, vampire hunters. So like her family's bloodline uh, kills monsters. And we find out that the, the gargoyle, I can't remember his name, Brom, I think his name's Brom, uh, Brom and Grace. And Grace is featured in the, um, the Court of the Vampire Queen. Anyway, so Grace's family, long line of like vampire hunters. Brahm's whole family killed by the vampire hunters. And Ms. Robert doesn't really, like, she talks about it, but like, that's a big deal. That's a lot. Like, you know, that's like some mafia romance stuff. And it's not developed. And the characters weren't developed. And it really could have gone really, really hard and really interesting. That's such an interesting relationship. How do you fall in love with someone or even have an arranged marriage to someone and their family literally wiped out your entire family. That's like if, I think her name was Meadow Soprano on The Sopranos. That'd be like if she married someone that like wiped out her family. I'm just like, oh, whatever. This isn't great, but oh, you know, we won't have a storyline. We won't develop this. So <laughs> God goes captive. Didn't do it for me. So I had two Katie Roberts books I didn't like. I have a second taste, Tessa Bailey. Wreck the Halls. Oh, did not enjoy. Had really high hopes. This was um, an arc I was sent by uh, NetGalley. Thank you. <laughs> I gave it a generous three stars. It's more like a two. Um, the heroine and hero, really cute potential. Uh, the, they're kind of like the scions, like the children of like, in, I think in real life, heart is sisters. But in the this book, they're, the band in my head is modeled after the band heart. And it, I guess it could be like Fleetwood Mac too. But um, so it's like basically the, the sisters of heart or like Christine McPhee, is that her name from uh, Fleetwood? And Stevie Nicks, it's sort of like if those women were best friends, like rock stars, got pregnant at the same time, then had a falling out and their children are like having a love thing go on. It's kind of like that idea. Our heroes, Beat, I think is the hero's name. Melody is the heroine, something like that. I think that's kind of cute. I mean, we have Apple Martin. We have uh, Moses Martin. We have, um, what are some other celebrity names? Uh, London uh, Hilton something, you know, which is kind of funny because you like huh, London Tipton from Sweet Life. I think that's kind of cute. But um yeah, so had potential. The hero's being blackmailed, and he sort of does the whole, um, he tries to get, like, the reunion Christmas show with the their moms going because he wants the billion dollars to pay off his blackmailer. I could have cared less about the whole blackmail storyline. Um, and this was a full-fledged novel, and it, it I don't think the storyline and stuff worked as a full novel. Uh, Window Shopping is literally one of my favorite romances. It was uh, Tessa Bailey's novella, Christmas novella from, like, two years ago, maybe three. I think it was two wonderful story. I really enjoyed that. It was reverse grumpy sunshine, uh, a window dresser heroine. Uh, the hero is a millionaire. He, his family like owns like a Bergdorf Goodman sort of thing. Loved window shopping. Uh, wreck the halls. It just felt too long and i it had potential, but I just don't think the, the storyline in the arc and the characters really fit well into an almost 400 page novel. I think it would have done a lot better as like a 175 to 225 kind of book. Um, so just, yeah, it wasn't, was not my favorite. That's why it's on my worst of the year. Now, these worst aren't, the, none of these books harmed me <laughs> in, in any way, like Darling Venom. <laughs> but uh, just, 
I didn't love them. So, and the last two, I pray, Lord, I got like, there's like two weeks left. Literally, there's two weeks left of this year. Oh, if I have another dad, I'm going to cry, especially if it's a disability. I'm planning to read the, um, uh, till we meet next year, some the one, the New Year's Eve one that just came out. I want to read it. I hope it's good. I really do. And I hope, um, Devil in Winter is good because I can't take, I can't take another bad book. Um, I really thought I was going to have some good books this month and they've been fine. They haven't been great or exciting. <coughs> Excuse me. So the last two are recent reads. It's Trick Shot by Kayla Gross. It was MFM. Super, super spicy. No plot. I have a full video on it coming out that just came out. So just watch that. And then Grumpy Santa. Hero is barely grumpy, barely present. Surprise pregnancy. Not my favorite. And not a Santa romance. I wanted some dark Santa. So... Uh, yeah, really bummed about that. That one, that one did hurt because I was ready for some Santa Claus, some Santa smut, <laughs> and it wasn't there. So, alas, I'm very sad about that. I look, oh gosh, we'll talk about that later. Um, could you imagine if I look like this? I'm like, here's my makeup favorite. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, those are my the worst books I read, or you know, worst books I read of 2023. I'll be back for my final two vlogmases, vlog smutmas, <laughs> smutmas, smutmas videos. Um, I'll be doing. Makeup, skincare, hair care, beauty tool favorites of the year. And then my final post will be on, well, for Vlogmas, Smutmas, <laughs> will be my favorite books of 2023. And then uh, I will like, have a break. But before the break, I will post my review on the Tessa Bailey New Year's Eve. So everyone have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. I'll see y'all soon. soon for another video. Bye, everyone.